<clears throat> All right, so what I'm going to tie here is my um, TRLS, which stands for Table Rock Lake Shad. Uh, I live on Table Rock Lake, Missouri, and uh, so I kind of worked with some guys down at the bait shop, not the fly shop, but the bait shop, uh, to kind of come up with this, um, I guess it'd be like a gizzard shad <clears throat> pattern. This one I added rubber legs to. Uh, this is more of the original. Both of these have been fished heavily. <laughs> like they get they get hammered on. Um, and I've tied them in a bunch of colors: uh, chartreuse and white, uh, orange and brown. Uh, I've actually tied them in quite a few colors for different people around the states, uh, and I've had no complaints. So, uh, but I've been asked to do a video on them uh, several times actually. So, uh, for, so I'm going to do it real quick. Uh, well, it's not going to be real quick. It's going to take a few minutes. But uh, anyway, so what I'm going to cover first is the core of the fly. Um, and that's this whole inner part here. This one I've got uh, like a black uh, dubbing. Uh, what, what do they call it? Like a black minnow dubbing inside. You can do it with different stuff. I'm just going to use UV. But the core of it is a dubbing brush that I make myself. Uh, it's just craft fur. This is gray craft fur. And um, the flash that's in there, I just use hollow flashaboo chartreuse. And you can really, the, the way I go about this is the flash that's going to go in the middle of this core that's going to make up the bulk of the fly in the middle that you're, you're really not going to see a whole lot of. Uh, but I try to use uh, colors, whether I'm tying it for me or locally or somebody else, is I try to use colors of like a generic like a generic uh, flashaboo color uh, of local shad in their water. And uh, oftentimes I just go back to this one, the chartreuse one, because it's kind of got that green, a little bit of purplish blue hue, you know, looks kind of shaddish. So anyway, so we'll kind of get started. Um, the first thing I, uh, well, the hook that I use is actually just a, um, it's an eagle claw hook uh, and it's a bait holder hook. My jaws are stuck. Must have some glue in there. So it comes, let me adjust my camera real quick. I know, top quality videos here. But uh, so it comes kind of curved like this and I'll just put it in my jaws and I'll just kind of bend it back straight. Um, I came across this hook, it worked really well for the profile and I just decided not to change it up. There's probably other hooks that you can use uh, the throat of it works really well on this fly, um, so that's just what I use. Um, so you can play around with that, with, with a you know, with, a, with whatever you want. Uh, now, if you got these barbs, man, I'm not getting that straight on the camera. Sometimes it looks straight to me, and it's not straight on the camera. Let me get that adjusted a little bit there. Lock that into place. Whoop. Okay, close. Whoop. Of course, I'm shooting a video. And those jaws don't want to open up quite right. There we go. So now I can kind of tilt it where I want it. I've got some glue stuck in there. There we go. Uh, so I just take a little pair of pliers. And I kind of just crimp those down. Again, you can use whatever hook you want. Uh, so for... Uh, my thread, I just use some uh, 100 denier GSP, and I just kind of get started behind the eye, or a little ways back, and I just wrap back over everything, and oops, I need sharp scissors, and I'll trim that out. Next, what I'll do is I'll just grab some crazy glue, crazy glue, and I just load the whole base up with crazy glue. Still not quite as straight as I want it. I'll just try to bend it back so that the profile's somewhat even. And I'll just kind of wrap forward, spiral wraps, uh, just to kind of give it that whole <coughs> locked into place feeling. Excuse me. Uh, next, what I do is I add a rattle to it. Uh, there's different kinds of rattles that you can get. Um, 
I just, you know, I just go down and get what the bait shop has. I, you know, I know there's rattles for flies, but I just use one of these glass ones. Uh, and what I do is I, a lot of the times they have like this little nipple that hangs out. I try to aim that down and I'll put it somewhere right in here so that the rattle hangs out just over the back of the, whoop, it's always a little harder to do it on camera. So that the rattle or the, that little nipple part hangs out just over the back of the bend. And then I'll wrap this in, you know, 15 times or so. And I'm going to start coming around. And then I'll pinch everything, pull it tight forward. And then I do it again. And it, uh, it works well. And it actually helps keep the profile of the of the pattern when you're fishing it. And you'll kind of see why in a little bit. So mine's kind of tilted down. It's not a big deal. Um, I try to keep it a little bit straighter, but it's really not a big deal. Then I come in and kind of glue the crap out of it again. Uh, just to make sure everything is all nice and solid right there. And it's not going to slide around on me. And I'll work it back. I'll work it forward. And I do it. I do it all again. So, two or three times, get it seated where, right where you want it. I'm having a hard time moving that now, uh, and that's that's good enough. Uh, next, what I'll do is I'll just grab some white uh, rooster saddle. This came from um, where did it come from? Ewing. Ewing, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And uh, so what I want to do is get the tail length. I kind of offset the tails a little bit, as you can see right there. Uh, the shorter one on the outside. Uh, and I want, you know, one and a half lengths of the hook shank. Now what I try to do is I try to line this stem up so that it splits the gap of, um, well, you'll see it when I do it on the, on the near side. But I want to try to get those stems lined up so that they kind of sit. It's a little easier when that rattles flush but kind of like so and they sit kind of in this little groove right here so I got two on the one side I'm gonna put two on the other and this all this really does is it doesn't show a whole lot it just kind of helps keep the tail uh, nice and bulky um, at the end of the day, this fly is going to be about four inches or just over four inches, um, which is like a really big shad here. Uh, maybe not a really big shad, but you kind of get where I'm coming from. And I'm just going to kind of seat those so that they're all running right out the back uh, and they're somewhat even. Uh, try not to have it run crazy like that. So some of this can take just a little finessing and uh, some of this beginning part can be just a little finicky. Uh, the middle part of this fly goes pretty quick um, and then the end of it, um, the end of the dressing takes a little effort. Um, so once I have that, I come back to my glue, glue it all in, I get the feathers on both sides. I mean, I really just load this up with glue. And uh, I'll start wrapping again. Uh, and I'm going to wrap back a little bit, but I'm going to hold everything in place as I do that, just so that it doesn't move too much. If your rattle's aiming down and you're wrapping back, you're going to have to kind of pull up. That's why I try to shoot that gap right there so that everything just kind of stays in line. Uh, and as long as it's reasonable, uh, you're good to go. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to come in and trim these guys out. And get rid of those and uh, you don't have to be super precise here it's all going to get wrapped up tied up glued down uh, I typically use a lot of glue on this pattern so uh, this next step that we're going to do is totally optional uh, I just like to do it because I know that it's exposed <laughs> so let me see if I can get that to sit where I want it. I'll put an extra wrap or two in. There we go. 
There we go. Wrap forward, wrap back, so on and so forth. So the next step is totally optional because all, all I'm going to do is just cover this up. And I'm just going to use some uh, Ice Dub UV Pearl. You know, pick your poison here, whatever you want, if you're going to do it, uh, whatever you got. Uh, if you want a little, I guess you could put a little hot spot in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack this. Uh, I'm going to stack this dubbing a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of get it on there. And I'm, I try to do this while that glue's still wet. So that as I wrap this in, I can kind of pull it tight a little bit. And all that glue that I just laid down is going to catch it and hold it. So I don't worry too much about it. Again, this part here is really optional, I guess, for you know peace of mind of... So something comes apart, I guess, I, I suppose, or opens up in the water. You've got something like flash there. You're not, you know, the fish isn't looking at the a rattle going, oh, man, no, that's not for me. Uh, but uh, I doubt that really happens. But anyway, so I'll just kind of wrap this all together like so. And you can kind of come down in front. Okay, so next is the core of the fly. And I'm just going to move right into this dubbing brush. And I'm just going to tie it in. And you can fold that over. You can trim it out. I'm just going to trim it out. If you're going to trim this out, don't use your good scissors. That's why I got a little black mark on this one. knowing So it reminds me that these scissors are already somewhat toast. <laughs> I'm going to move up the, uh, to the front of the fly. Um, so I've got a, oh, I don't know, 3 sixteenths, quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to start drawing everything one way. You can definitely lick your fingers here if you're building this out of craft fur like I do. And I'm going to just start going over it. Um, you got to play with it a little bit to keep everything flowing. And I kind of load this one up here. I don't. I don't skimp on the middle. Um, and the reason being is because this really keeps this whole middle section really loaded with um, material. <clears throat> so I kind of pack it in. It takes a minute. If you start to get through there <clears throat> or through here and uh, you've got stuff trapped, grab your bodkin or some toothbrush or something and pull it out. The, the sooner you do it, the better it is. Uh, otherwise, you may be trying to dig it out. You may lose some flash. You may lose some craft fur, yada, yada. So just keep on, keep on keeping on, keep on working it here. I'm just going to work this all the way up to my thread. So these guys take a little bit of time to make. Um, you know, they they work really well. They swim well. Um, you can add. Uh, you can add lead up to the front here uh, if you wanted to, if you want to get a faster sink rate. Um, these things don't sink especially fast. Um, these things are dynamite during spawning season because they, they'll they just kind of do a slow dive right into a bed. I know a lot of people frown upon that, but uh, I know I, I fish catch and release. 98% uh, of the time is pretty rare that I keep anything. Um, Maybe if I'm camping or something and, you know, I catch a trout that's, like, seriously wounded, I'll take him back and cook him up or something. But, uh, but quite frankly, I don't like the taste of bass, so I <laughs> just throw him back. And you kind of see how we're just building all this up. And it takes a minute. And I just take my time because uh, otherwise you can really, uh, one, skimp yourself on the core of this fly. 
uh, and two. Um, you know, it, it just it, it 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 keeps the bulk of all this area flowing in a nice um, nice direction. It, it keeps it shapely, as it were. And so, anyhow. So when I build these dubbing brushes, they're probably 12 inches long, and on this fly in particular, uh, I, you know, I probably use close to half of that foot. So I'm usually right around the six inch mark um, to build it when it comes to the dubbing brush. So I essentially I can get two out of one dubbing brush. So as you're coming through, it should start to look like this, where you kind of have this little bit of white hanging through. You've got some flash coming in. And, um, but uh, it keeps the profile really well if you do it this way. I had some people, uh, or actually I shouldn't say some people. I had a guy, uh, I showed this fly to somebody one time, and I was selling them, and... Uh, Basically saying, oh, you're ripping people off. You know, I tie the same thing for two bucks, you know. Uh, I'm like, that's great what your core made out of. And, and he's like, well, my core is made out of, uh, you know, I forgot what he said. But uh, I'm like, well, do you do a, you know, a full uh, dubbing brush core uh, to keep the profile? And go, oh, no, I don't need that. And so, well, you know, that's kind of why I'm charging so much for these because, one, I got to build the damn thing, and two, it keeps the shape. So you can kind of see, as we're going along, it keeps this shape pretty nicely, just like so. And periodically, I'll lick my fingers and draw the material back, uh, you know, and place a place a wrap in. So got some nice flash in there and everything else. Next, uh, what I add is my lateral lines. I'm just going to use. Actually, just some grizzly dry fly hackle because I like to keep them small. Uh, and I'll use the longer feathers where they, and I'll cut the tips off or use, sometimes I'll use the tips if the feathers are nice. Um, but um, I like to kind of run them to a point, obviously. You know, it just seems to be the right thing to do. So, anyhow, what I'll do, whoop, there we go, is I'll just kind of come in and trim them back and forth until it comes to a point. You don't need to have a super fine point. But as long as they kind of come off in this little spade uh, look, I, I, think it's, I think it's good. Now I'm going to place this one on the far side first. What I try to do, I know it's a little out of camera. I'm not going to spend the time to adjust it. But I try to get this to run almost to the end of all the material or use the, uh, these white feathers here with my left hand that I'm touching. It's kind of a gauge. And, uh, and I'll stop it just behind uh, where those end. Uh, now on these ones, they can be a little finicky to put in. Uh, so I, try, I mean, I really try to keep them on the side here and kind of keep them flat like that. So uh, take, your, take your wrap slow on it until you kind of get it, you know, right where you want it. And uh, they want to pop out sometimes. Uh, you can glue them shut. I mean, if they if they pop out a whole lot, maybe fix it. If they pop out in a wedge like this, don't worry about it too much because once they you know once they get wet, uh, you know they're not really going anywhere. Uh, all they're going to do is suck tight and conform to the side. Uh, the main thing I worry about is that you know they're kind of lined up on the side, and I try to gauge that by is it lined up with the side of the eye? So, well, that, I'm gonna have to redo that one. That one really moved on me. But, of course it's a video, you know? It's a video and I got stuff in my way. Of course they're gonna move. And I typically do this with sort of loose turns, and then once I get to the end of this point, I glue them down. Uh, you can put a uh, hair clip on them. I 
There we go, that's a little better. So a few parts of this, you got to kind of work it and take your time if you want it to stay seated uh, in the area that you want. So there we go. So now they're not popping out so far. Uh, now I wrap this forward, then I'll pull down so all, the, all my tension's on the front side. If you wrap back to cut those off and you pull down, what's going to happen is you're going to apply a bunch of tension towards the back and it's going to flare these open and we don't, you know, I, I typically don't like that. If you like that or whatever, cool. Whatever floats your boat. Or in this case, sinks your fly. Now I'll just kind of wrap back onto everything a little bit and lock them down. I'm going to kind of lick everything to kind of get the shape back into it just like so and I'm going to glue this all back down. Uh, this is one of my glue heavy flies. I try to avoid having glue heavy flies um, but on this uh, particular pattern I like to try to keep everything locked into place. I mean I literally you can see I'm like brushing up onto the grizzly uh, just to try to help keep everything moving in the same direction. Uh, you know, we're going to use uh, Solares 2 and uh, gel glue. Um, so this is a glue-heavy fly. But uh, anyway, I'll give it just a second to set up. While I'm doing that, I like to add a little outside color and so what I'll do is I'll just get I've got some purple flash blue here I'll get uh, just one strand of the purple uh, and this is kind of the colors that the shad uh, mirror in my water uh, they got this little bit of blue they got a little bit of silver a little bit of green a little bit of uh, purple and so I try to add just a little bit of all those colors and uh, oh, there it is. So next, I'm just going to take my two strands, and you change this up for uh, your waters. Um, you know, don't don't say purple and blue works for you if if you don't have shad that have purple and blue. Um, but the the ones we have here have just a just a hint of these colors. <clears throat> so I'm going to lift this up under my thread. glued shut and I just kind of lay them in there and I'll fold this guy over into the back and then when you do that and you've kind of put your two colors in uh, I trim them now um, so that they're not running just super wild out the back uh, I don't trim them even either I just grab one at a time and trim one at a time and uh, just to different lengths just whatever I'm um, just you know I'll take a look at it and say oh hey that's where it goes uh, so no r rhyme or re reason per se and so that you have something that looks about like that um, yeah so I've just got the little hint there anyway so what I do next here <clears throat> is I'll grab some uh, ice dub and I'm just going to use UV uh, pearl here and uh, I grab uh, not a, I mean like a decent amount, uh, a decent clump. That's probably a little bit more than I normally grab. And I sort of stack these just a little bit because uh, I'm not going to dub it onto my uh, thread. I'm just going to kind of try to get it all going in one direction. I'm going to put a couple wraps in to tie it in. I'm just Either bend this thing over, work it around, um, however it works out, tie that guy in. Um, now I'm going to glue this next, but first what I want to do, um, I'm going to put a couple tight wraps in. Uh, I'm going to take my toothbrush and brush it out, use my fingers. 
I want everything moving to the back. Uh, anything that's loose, I want gone. Um, now's my help. Oh, see, I'm missing a little on that side. I can kind of move it around. <clears throat> so on and so forth before everything is right where right where I want it to be and it doesn't have to be perfect here let's spin this guy up spin my thread that is and I'm gonna lock that into place and now I'm gonna glue it again alright I'm going to give that just a second to set. Now, so halfway through looks about like that. Um, next, I'm going to do the belly, and the belly is just craft fur. Uh, I don't get a super lot here. Um, just. Uh, kind of enough to show a white belly but at the same time allow a lot of that gray and flash and everything to come through so what I've got here um, if you want I don't know how to describe it but if you wanted to line it up on something like this be about that wide I'll put my ruler up here real fast so the diameter is roughly I don't know three quarters of an inch uh, on the fly itself, and so I've got, you know, probably a third of that for the belly. And I clean out all the underfurge, take a comb, pull it out. Okay. Uh, next, all I do is I'll just kind of line this up to see how far back to the back it goes. I want it to kind of just collaborate, if you will. Uh, into the tail area. Uh, I don't want it overpowering. I don't want it, uh, you know, sparse, I guess is a good word. I don't know, it's, it seems like it's overused. But anyway, so I want it just to kind of flow into the back. And so once I have that distance, uh, I'll trim out the material I don't need. And I leave uh, probably a quarter inch or just a little over a quarter inch. And put it right on the bottom side. Oh. Almost screwed up. I'm reverse tying here. <laughs> so, but I want that to overlay. Uh, sorry. I was like, oh, wait a minute. What's going on? Uh, so, but I want it to overlay like this. I right, pen trap that in. And uh, I'll splay this open with my thumbs so that way when I turn it to the side my craft fur is uh, the white craft fur is basically uh, just below the side of the hook eye on both sides and kind of open like so put one more wrap in okay then I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the uh, black craft fur but on top And as far as actually building the fly, we're about done. Um, to finish it off, it takes a little more effort and a little uh, bit of dry time. Uh, I've got some flies actually here that are, I've already tied that are in the staging process so that they're, uh, that's not quite enough. Um, so I'll be able to kind of jump through um, the final stages with you. So I'll, we'll be switching out flies here in a minute. And where'd my comb go? So. Uh, typically, each one of these takes about 45 minutes to tie in total. Uh, doing it this way. Um, it just kind of is what it is. So I, I try to build these in stages, or I'll build the bodies to all of them, like I'm doing here. Uh, and I'll build five or six, seven of them, whatever it is. And... Um, And line them all up for like the last little bit of work, which uh, I mean, it's not like it takes a super amount of time, uh, but with dry time and everything, 
you know, you could be looking at an hour, hour and a half to do uh, five to seven flies, something like that. Okay. Okay. Cool. I didn't keep as much as I normally would on the underneath side. That's all right. So at this point, what I want to do is just start to kind of separate all of this. And I'm a little far forward on this. I need to move that thread back just a fuzz. choke up on that I actually did an articulated version of this fly um, swims pretty well it's kind of a pain in the ass to cast but um, it ended up being about uh, 10 inches or so which is considerably bigger and four. Okay, so I'm just using the end of a big pin here. I'm just kind of pushing everything back. This part can take a minute. I uh, really try to work everything together. I get my fingers wet. Uh, if I got, you know, white craft fur coming up on top like that, I try to get rid of it now because it, uh, it's probably not a deal breaker, but, you know. Doesn't look good exactly at the same time. I get this funky piece of white craft fur going. <laughs> it just looks kind of weird. Okay. Now, I want to tie that in. And I'm going to give it a quick comb. It's a little hard to do with. Everything in the way here. Just so I can start pushing everything around. <coughs> Alright, now I'm going to get the bigger end of the big pin and lick my fingers again and start drawing it back. Kind of like so. I try to keep the split line uh, right at or just below the uh, side of the eye of the hook. Um, is it a deal breaker? Probably not. Um, but it does, you know, it does look good. Or looks better, I should say that way. And this really gives me a chance to see if everything's working together. Okay, cool. Now I can come in with my scissors and keep grabbing my dull ones. out front come on with your toothbrush this part here is really just about working that material somewhat even so that uh, from all angles it shimmers and shines um, reasonably even as it were uh, if your lateral lines here start to uh, move on you, this is the time you want to fix them, and so on. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I need my sharp scissors, and I'm just going to come out and come in, I should say, and trim out 
just any kind of obscure, funky business hanging out up front. All right, that part wants to keep popping open. I'm gonna spin my thread and take it back. I don't want open turns. Now the little thread build up here. Um, don't worry about it too much as long as you keep the eye clear. Um, and it's not too big. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, so next what I wanna do is I'm gonna add some flash to the top of this. And what I've got here is the, uh, oh, which one is this one? Uh, a salt and pepper. Uh, and what I'll do is I just try to grab, you know, two or uh, one or two strands of like the four different, three different colors they have in here. Uh, I don't like going super crazy on here. I try to make sure I have a black and, or maybe two. Uh, but only five or six strands, because uh, we're gonna double this over. So that that will end up being, you know, 10 or uh, however many you grab. And so, less is kind of more here as well. There's many other places in fly tying. I just want to kind of get this wet so that it builds the profile that I want. I want to lift my flash boot right on top. Kind of work it around. This flash boot is meant to stay primarily on top and then like down the sides just a little bit so that it's not overbearing on one side or another. Let's we'll say you have something about like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right. Cool. Um, once I have that, I'm gonna whip finish. because that's the fly itself. Uh, finishing this thing off with the, at least the way I do the face and everything. Um, it takes a few more minutes and uh, there's some dry time involved. Um, so it's like I said, I've already got some other flies staged up. So the first thing I'll do, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera, is I'll come in and I'm gonna color that thread black. Uh, is this part super necessary? No, I just like the way Sharpie works into the uh, um, gel spun thread. It's actually gonna get covered up again with more black, but we're gonna use fingernail polish. So next I'll take all of this and again, lick it, kind of keep it somewhat shapely and just apply a nice amount of uh, super glue to this whole area. I don't go up on the fly too much, uh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch, something like that. And uh, we're gonna let that dry. It takes about 30 seconds or so. Uh, so we'll be moving along pretty quickly. Um, for the fingernail polish, I'm just using some uh, Sally Hansen's uh, Extreme Wear. Any black fingernail polish will work. And what this does is uh, it leaches, it's gonna leach into the front part of that craft fur and it's gonna kind of 
just hold the position or uh, or keep all this material in position going back so it doesn't you don't you're not committed yet to the overall shape <clears throat> plus the uh, shad that I have here they tend to have like a little black ring around their face more often than not or at least like a really super dark olive or something like that so this kind of just represents that that's so it's kind of a dual purpose All right, that glue should be set up. And again, I kind of lick it and the old lick it and stick it. And I'm just going to I don't go up too high like I said like an eighth of an inch or so. I'm going to bring it all the way around. And just kind of like that. Uh and then actually quite often I just go ahead and paint the hook eye with a fingernail polish black. Uh, it gets beat up, but when it's first tied it looks kind of cool just to have the black, black eye on there. Alright, so uh, this needs to dry, it needs to set up. Uh, you can use a heater. If you need to, um, or you just kind of, you know, leave it in device or whatever you need need to do. I'm gonna pull that out so the fly should look something about like this at this point. Yeah, I just need to. Swap it out so they can dry in another vise for the moment. And uh, I'm going to put this one in because this one's already dry. So the next thing I do here uh, is uh, shape it again. <laughs> uh, with the craft fur, it seems to be really important on this pattern, at least in particular, to really shape, keep this shape. Uh, and then towards the end of the fly, or when the fly is done, I should say, uh, you know, I'll actually dunk this thing in water, shape it by hand, and then just like let it sit overnight, and uh, it tends to keep that shape from the, there on out. So, so what I want to do here is just like you see, I'm kind of teasing everything so that I've get my so I get my uh, white and black ladder kind of meeting up with the lateral line just like so, and. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I want to get uh, some Solares Flex, and I kind of just put it right here on top of the fingernail polish, and just kind of a bead, uh, kind of like a caulking bead. If any of you guys are into uh, construction or something like that, you'll know what I'm talking about exactly. But you just want a little bead around there, just like so. Next, I take a. Uh, this is just a nylon very coarse toothbrush uh, it's actually meant for you know you can get these at Home Depot for pretty cheap and I'm going to take that I'm just going to start pulling it back and all I'm doing here is kind of finalizing my shape uh, for just just this front part of the section of the head because so I don't want to I don't want to get crazy so like see my stuff's moving around down there I don't like it now's my chance to kind of seed everything where I want it, get my lateral line back up on the side, uh, get the material in place to support that staying there. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump the camera. Um, um, you know, keep the black or the flash on top where you need it or want it. And so all this does is really just kind of give support to the overall shape of the uh, frontal area. Now, you know, you can run it back and just kind of stretch it through. Um, it's not a big deal. So once you have it where you want it, uh, you know, clean this guy off. I just kind of rub it on a paper towel and it's pretty much what I use this thing for is uh, just that and this kind of purpose. So now you've kind of got the shape of that fly right where you want it. 
And now you can take your uh, light to it. If uh, I can find it. Oh, I was going to say, I just had it. It was so close, it's right underneath me. Uh, and I just, I start slow. I don't, I don't blast away on it. So I can kind of maneuver it around. See if it's holding shape. So, now once it starts taking shape, you can kind of see why, why I like to have that, um, uh, rattle on the top side in the back and uh you know we can kind of we're building that core again with all that craft fur and that rattle's playing a part in keeping this bulk right here because a lot of this bulk you're seeing is coming from that rattle and that craft fur having to pass over it uh so it, it's it stays a nice big water pushing profile uh, well, within reason for a four-inch fly, anyway. Um, and then the flex allows you to move everything around. Uh, and then before I actually like really blast it and zap it, I'll kind of come through and see if there's any extra uh, maneuvering or whatever. You know, and once you've kind of zapped it, you can push it back forward play with it a little bit uh, now the goal here is to get eyes on there so right I'm gonna I usually put my eyes like right about here so you want to have some sort of a flat surface right there when you w w when you're done with this section of it now that I've kind of got everything where I want it I want to zap it. Now you'll see how there's like a little slope running here. Uh, I don't really worry about that too much. Uh, if you want to make that a little bit bigger and a little bit thicker, uh, once the eyes are on and the very final step, you can come back and um, do like I did here and just coat this whole entire head with uh, uh, Solarest Thin. And it, it really kind of goes away and it'll keep that profile so uh, that's an option too that's a good option if you if you you're gonna be t chucking this thing in a brush or uh, it's gonna be hitting rock or whatever so anyway at this point now that that's dry and I've used the solar red for the throat I take some red fingernail polish and I just kind of paint the throat in um, the nice thing about using that solar red flex is uh, when you put on that craft fur, it helps stop the, just like the immediate leaching of the fingernail polish into the um, craft fur itself. And so it does kind of sit on top. And then obviously, if you needed to, you could, you know, repaint this uh, as it's sitting more on top than actually leaching in. So something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I just kind of let it run wild, make it look like some gill. I try to leave a little bit of white up front. Uh, uh, and that's about it. So at this stage, uh, again, this thing's going to have to dry. I'm going to switch these out again. And it doesn't take too long, you know, five minutes or whatever. But for an hour-long video, uh, you don't want to sit for another five minutes. So. Okay. So I've already got this one kind of already done. Again, lick it and kind of push everything where you need it, need, you need it or want it to be. Uh, this is kind of your final chance to come in and trim out any, uh, you know, uh, forward protruding uh, flash that just didn't make the cut or um, hair. Uh, you know, if you're really struggling with this here, what you can do is uh, really lick this down really, really well. 
and kind of pinch the front of it and take a lighter and torch all this stuff on the front. Uh, just be careful because if, you know, if that flame gets away from you, you're going to torch the front of your fly and the whole thing's toast. Uh, but you can do it. So, uh, next is you just get your favorite holographic eyes and, uh, or whatever eyes you want to use. I don't make too big of a deal out of these. I'm just using uh, some quarter inch, uh, one of these here, just the holographic super pearl, I guess. Oh, I lost an eyeball in the bag. Let's go ahead and get that one. I'm notorious for losing eyeballs. Um, and then to attach these, I'll use the uh, just some Loctite super glue. Uh, you can get crazy and use all kinds of different things. Uh, so I'll turn this thing on the side, uh, and I try to line it up so that again it's in line with the uh, side of the uh, uh, eye of the hook. And just kind of figure out where I want it. And I'll put a glob there. Now normally what I'll actually do is I'll uh, I'll turn this vise facing me, but I don't have room to do that with the camera, so I'm going to have to just kind of wing it here. Let's see if I can get them to be about even. I think that'll probably work. <clears throat> and then I'll just start on the top side and just gotta be careful doing this. So you don't get that gel super glue on your fingers. Kinda like so. like so and uh, if you look at them from the side you can kind of gauge if they're in the right spot or not uh oh no 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 okay good <laughs> uh, and then what I'll do is I just kind of dab them into place um, these ones are just a fuzz off but they'll catch on your fingers so easy I've actually ruined these bass bugs before by overworking those eyes. So there you go. I mean, that's essentially it right there. It's my TR, TRLS uh, streamer. Uh, it ends up being about four inches long. Once this glue dries, if you want to put kind of like a face mask or a helmet on it, uh, you can, I just use like the solar as thin, uh, and I'll kind of, uh, coat the entire eye. Actually, we'll just go ahead and do that real quick, but I'll start with the eyeball itself and just work it around the eye. Now you can work it just around the eye itself, um, so that you're kind of covering up any gaps that you have in there um, and not put the whole like mask on uh, what I've noticed though is that kind of the the face of the fly kind of tends to pancake a little bit as you can see right there and um, personally I just don't like the look of that so what I end up doing is just doing the whole the whole mask you know from basically the throat all the way to the front and you need to take your time doing this part too um, so when I do this part I'll actually get that on there and I'll just blast it so and I'll come back and do the other one um, I'll go ahead and do the whole 
shebang since we're already this far into it and see how I glue it. Um, then again, I start on the top of the eye, I work around the eye. I just try to encase it, really. And if you just want to encase the eyes to try to help them stay on a little better, that's cool. Um, you know, if you take a wicked strike, I'm not sure anything that you anything that you do is going to keep those eyeballs on. Uh, but I could, you know, depending on what you do. So then, once I have that, I'll kind of just come ac right across the brow of the fly. And start working my way down towards the eye. Uh, it's I found that it's easier to kind of create a line towards the back part of it and bring it forward than it is to start down towards the eye and then take it back, if that makes sense. So I'm working the res the uh, UV resin from the eyes to the front, not the front back. Um. So again, you know, this is something you'd want to do if you're, if you're, you know, if you're fishing serious weeds or uh, rocks or, you know, or uh, or if this pattern just starts working out for you super well, um, you know, you may want to consider uh, putting this whole kind of helmet, as it were, on. Uh, it pushes water <clears throat> pretty well. Uh, especially when you have that this kind of quote unquote helmet on. But when I do that, I'll zap this thing pretty fast. Because I don't want that moving around too much on me. Uh, and then I'll apply an additional coat to fill in the gaps as needed. Uh, if I get a little low spot somewhere or uh, whatever, to try to get it nice and smooth. Um, and when you do, or if you do, this whole helmet action to it, I have found it's horribly beneficial that after you uh, complete the this kind of UV helmet to it, uh, and it's and it seems hard uh, to just go ahead and put it out in the sunshine for about 30 minutes um, before you fish it. Um, it seems to really, you know, I, I think the, the sunlight does a much better job than the UV lights do when it comes to using this much uh, UV glue. But once you have the fly built like this <clears throat> and uh, all your UV resins dry to the touch, uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll actually take this fly and I'll uh, put it inside like a little cup of water something about like this size oh, I, got, I know I got a bug in there I'm, I'm studying that guy but anyway um, just dunk him in there kind of let him you know shake it out a little bit and then form the fly and let it sit and let let that wet fly sit overnight and dry that way <clears throat> it'll really keep the form and I think you'll find it beneficial in the long run uh, to do that uh, to this pattern with the with the craft fur and everything being involved and uh, really just helps keep the keep the shape of the fly overall so um, so when it's all said and done you should have a fly that looks about like that longest video I've ever done um, but uh, I, you know I had several people ask actually more than several people asked to do it and I've done step by steps and um, that didn't seem to work for some so <laughs> I pr I've been promising now for about a year I'd uh, do a video on this and so uh, I just you know I had everything geared up and said okay let's do it so anyway if you like the video uh, I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up uh, you can always subscribe to my channel I appreciate that too um, let me know what you think of the fly and how it works for you. And uh, I'll change the colors up as needed. Uh, chartreuse, 
and white works well. Uh, I've tied some uh, orange and brown for a guy out in Illinois, northern Illinois. Uh, he said it worked. Those those were just crushing bass up there for him. Um, so anyway, that's my TRLS shad, Table Rock Lake shad. Happy tying, everybody. Take care. We'll see you next time.